tradition for them. But they used to test Muslims, have some pork. And if they didn't eat it, they would report them to the Inquisition. We're not in that situation. Now, the other thing, one of the benefits of this, and trust me, the only way you get strong is resistance. If you want to build your muscles, you have to have resistance. Allah puts resistance to make us stronger, spiritually and physically. Everything that's happened to us is good. It's all good. That's a hadith in Sahih Muslim, Suhaib al Rumi. Everything that's happened to us is good. If we have Ayn al Yaqeen, if we have the eye of certainty, if you're caught up in dunya, oh, my dunya is not looking good, that, then that's another thing. That's not tiklan al Allah. That's another problem. That's a disease of the heart. The unsettling state that the Muslims are in in this country, this is a good thing. It's about time Muslims start waking up. <coughs> You've been here for a long time. What have you done? Who have you, who have you told out there who you are? Where are all the amazing free clinics? Not one down in Los Angeles or one over here. Where is the Muslim hospital where we treat anybody that comes? You don't need insurance. Because Muslims traditionally did that. We, in, in this country, the Muslim physicians are worth several billion dollars. Several billion dollars. Where are our institutions? Where, where are our colleges? Where's our television station? The Mexicans have dozens of television stations. Dozens. And when we do these things, we usually do them so poorly, nobody's going to watch. So we have to wake up. But trust me, you have to accept what comes to you with intelligence, but you have to accept what, what comes to you. Allah is waking this ummah up, and we're still snoring. And it keeps happening until people wake up. You break the covenant with Allah, you break the covenant with Allah, then if Allah removes his providential care, you have no one to blame but yourself. Man wajada khayran, fal yahmadillah. Wa man wajada ghayra dharika, fala yurumanna illa nafsa. If you find good, thank Allah. And if you find anything other than good, don't blame anybody but yourself. Because that's, that's the madhab of Islam. You want the madhab of Islam? That's the madhab of Islam. The madhab of Islam is... Why is this happening? Why did we lose Uhud? We're the people of truth. We were with the Prophet. That's Sahaba, the best. Have we disobeyed the Prophet? Those people on the, on the mountain that abandoned their, their, for booty, for dunya, they abandoned their, their place and, and they lost. They had a, they, they, even the Prophet was bloody, he lost uh, part of his tooth, he has the chain mail in his cheek. The place where his blood uh, drops still smells like musk. I've been there, the smell is amazing. After 1400 years, you could still get the whiff of that from his blood that was spilt there. But that's our Prophet Islam. So, if Muslims don't obey Allah and obey His Messenger, Allah wa Rasul wa uli minkum. As long as they don't tell you to disobey Allah. And that's any government you're under. Whether it's a Muslim government, whether it's a Christian government, like in Habasha, where they had a terrorist organization planning to assassinate Najashi, that Kathir, that Trinitarian Kathir. No, they went, they spoke to him. Amr bin Aas went there and said, Oh, they say this and that about your religion. Right? When, when the Prophet's companions went there and Jafar spoke, he didn't say, yeah, you, you're a kafir because you say, in Allah, you say that. No. He said, here's what our religion teaches. He didn't attack his religion. He said, here's what our religion teaches. And Najashi had tears coming down his eyes. This is the hikmah. Our Prophet never created any terrorist organization. He never had cells. He never had secret meetings at night. His, his, his home is completely transparent. We even know what was revealed in the house. We know the domestic disputes. We 
know Aisha. We know about the honey. We know about Zainab. We know about Hafsa. Open book. That's our Prophet Sallallahu He had nothing to hide, nothing to be ashamed of. And if you're practicing his faith, you have nothing to hide and you have nothing to be ashamed of. And I'll just conclude by saying one thing. This Ummah, historically, is the single most extraordinary civilization in human history. No civilization has the record that this Ummah. You have nothing to be ashamed about of your fathers, your ancestors. But we should be ashamed about how we represent them today. The people that built Taj Mahal. If these guys got to India, they'd blow up Taj Mahal because it's a tomb. <laughs> they'd blow up Taj Mahal. A'udhu Billah. Bid'ah. الحمد لله صلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله ومن والاه الحمد لله الله سبحانه وتعالى يقول في كتابه إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم مبارك على سيدنا محمد We are very fortunate to be in the Bay Area. And I ذَكِّرُكُمْ بِنِعْمِ This is a very educated place. And as you know, you have neighbors, you have people that you work with at your job. They're by and large good people. This is a reality. There, th this civilization has been trying very hard to overcome its historical sin of racism. You know, they're trying. They're not there yet, but they're trying. There's a lot of people trying. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا كَانَ رَبُّكَ لِيُهْلِكَ الْقُرَى بِظُلْمٍ وَأَهْلُهَا مُصْلِحُونَ Allah will not destroy a people for zulm. Bayadawi says it's shirk here. If amongst them are people that are trying to rectify. And there's a lot of people that try to do that. That's something that we have to recognize about this culture. But these people are frightened. They're scared of us. Just like Muslims in the Muslim world are scared of the Americans. They are. They're scared of drones. They're scared of, of bombs and strikes. They're scared. The Americans here, they're afraid of us. Because they have been brainwashed into thinking this is a religion of hatred, of terrorism. We have a responsibility. We have a responsibility. And unfortunately, when events like this happen, and Allahu Alam what happened, but when events like what happened in San Bernardino, where it's somebody who's been working for several years at a place, everybody knows him, even the Muslims say he didn't appear to be radical, and suddenly he goes ballistic, then people start thinking, maybe Ghulam, you know, he, he seems normal, but look at that guy down there. You know, they're, they're afraid, and you have to recognize that, you know? So it's important for us to, to be aware of the time we're living in. Uh, I, I received something the other day. Somebody was at a place where Bill O'Reilly was staying. And, and Bill O'Reilly was having dinner. And there was a Muslim family in a table next to him. And they started having a debate, should we reach out to him? And just ask him to. And some of them said, it's a waste of time. He won't do anything. There's no benefit. And some of them said, no, we should do that. So they, they, they got a, a dessert, and they sent it over to his table, just as a gift. And then he acknowledged it. The next day, they saw him again, and they decided to approach him. And one of them sat and had a long conversation with him about being a Muslim and how, what Islam is. The, after the San Bernardino incident, when he mentioned it, he mentioned this man at the table. And he said... Unfortunately, this taints millions of good, law-abiding Americans. Even people that have horrible track records. If Listen to the words of Allah. Don't return a wrong with another wrong. That's true. That's true. Allah said 
You can redress wrong with justice, which he called a sayya. It's not a sayya, but it looks like it because it's harsh and it's intiqam. But he said, وَمَنْ عَفَى وَأَصْلَحْ عَلَى اللَّهِ okay? But people forget that. They forget all those verses in the Quran that tell us. And, and what did our Prophet do? That's his, that's his sunnah. You want to follow the sunnah of the Prophet? Reach out to your enemy. Because that's what he did. He sat with them. When, when his wife's mother came to Medina, she wouldn't sit with her because she was a mushrik. She wouldn't sit with her. And the verse was revealed. Her own family was fighting. But this was a woman who was a non-combatant. She wasn't fighting you. And Allah said, she's your mother. Bring her in. Treat her with bir. This is our religion. Then the one with whom you have animosity towards, suddenly he's like your best friend. Don't despair of the grace of Allah. Because the people that hate Islam most, according to the Prophet, become the best supporters of Islam. That's a hadith. So don't think because they hate Islam. Everybody's looking at death. Everybody's looking at death. One of the rahmas that we had is the study of Quran that came out. That Harvard Perennial published. Hopefully many, many Americans will buy that and see an intelligent religion and a beautiful scripture that calls people to these high ideals. This is, this is, these, are, these are great blessings in the midst of the tribulation. So, نحن في عين البلاء مع العافية like Imam al-Mujaddidi said. We're in the midst of tribulation in the dunya, but we have the well-being of Allah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, make us uh, lighthouses that show people what, what true Islam is. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate our community. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala restore our intellect for those who have lost them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the plots of those who plot against this religion, may they fall back on them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from their evil. May Allah guide those who are ignorant amongst them who want good. May Allah guide them. And those who know what Islam is and yet are distorting it. May Allah deal with them as he deals with people that are evil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, protect this country. And, and, and protect the Muslims in this country. And protect the people that we live among. May we be good neighbors to them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our women and give them courage in the face of these calamities and protect our children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah restore our, our, our brothers and sisters in other places to better times. May Allah restore security to the Muslim land and, 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 and give them succor and repose and help. And may Allah give us yaqeen in our hearts to know that nothing will afflict us except what Allah has decreed for us. May Allah give us the yaqeen of Ibn Abbas. May Allah give us the... the the sincerity of those early people, inshallah. May Allah forgive all of us, forgive this, protect this masjid and all our masjids in places of worship and protect the synagogues and protect the churches and protect the temples. These are the things that we were sent to protect as a community. You came out for all of humanity. May Allah restore these truths to our hearts and to our community. Inna Allah ya'maru bil adli wa ihsan he commands the justice and charity. He prohibits foulness and dishonorable things. And aggression and oppression. He forbids these things to aggress against people. May Allah realize these truths in our hearts. He is exhorting us that perhaps we might be reminded. Tradition for them. But they used to test Muslims, have some pork. And if they didn't eat it, they would report them to the Inquisition. We're not in that situation. Now, the other thing. One of the benefits of this, and trust me, the only way you get strong is resistance. If you want to build your muscles, you have to have resistance. Allah puts resistance to make us stronger, spiritually and physically. 
Everything that's happened to us is good.